Just say, I have Jesus every step of the way. My journey might have some valleys, but praise God, I don't have to camp here. I'll keep walking because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I was saying I was out with Donnie you know I really loved what he said last week about you know so many people have said to me and I could relate to that so much when he said you know man it's hard to be single and then he said but it's hard to be married <laughs> how many of you would agree with that I mean if your spouse is here don't raise your hand just shake your head real lightly uh, all of us know that it's a challenge no matter what we do in life this morning I feel in my heart, really, we've, in the first service, we just had a great time. God showed up. But I think what I'm going to be talking to you about this morning is something that I think is so apropos or so timely in our lives. It's a word called character. And the Bible describes it in many words, but how many of you know we've been talking over the last few weeks about, a, I, I read this quote, it says, guard your thoughts for they become your words. How many of you would agree that our, our thoughts really are challenging? And let me say something about your thoughts. How many of you know, I, I mean, we'll put scripture up here on the screen and we'll make it easy for you, but how many of you would agree that, how would you like your thoughts put up there on that screen? I don't know about you, I'd run out the back door. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I have to admit, I mean, I try, you know, you try to renew your mind, you do all these things, but it can be challenging, amen? amen. But, you know, with the Holy Spirit, what's powerful is even though God knows all of us and knows everything about us, He knows every thought we have. How many of you know He still loves us? Even despite yourself, even despite myself, even though I'm not what I would always want to be, God still loves me. And how many of you know that makes a difference? The real power is the love of God. It's not so much because we're so perfect, but that He made us and we became imperfect, but He still loves us. He still cares about us, even though He knows everything about us, the good, the ugly, and the bad. But just look at your neighbor and say, God still loves me. Just say that to somebody right now. And I, I say that because it's so hard sometimes to accept that love. I mean, how many of you know it's, it's easier to listen to the bad things sometimes than it is the good things? In fact, uh, I really believe a lot of times when it comes to our thought life, we listen to the wrong voice because it says, guard your words for they become your actions. How many of you know your words have power? I mean, people that say, well, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. How many of you know that's a lie? Words have done more damage than any single bullet has ever done. That's right. yeah. And yet at the same time, we still many times in our life don't realize that our words have power and have that anointing to bring life or death. But choose you this day life, everybody say life. life. Then it talked about basically our life. Guard your actions for they become your character. How many of you know character is something I want to talk about this morning? Let me, let me leave you with this quote. It says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Proverbs tells us, Romans says, for those who live according to the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But those according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the carnal mind is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Everybody say life. life. How many of you know God came into our life to give us life? Complete, full, nothing missing, nothing broken. In other words, really what, what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life is to bring something into our life that the world cannot give us. Amen. But guess what? The world can't take it away either. And so I say all of this because if we are going to really 
control our thoughts and we're going to realize our words have power and we're going to realize that our actions can hurt people. How many of you would agree that our actions not only develop us, but our actions also show our character? Years ago, I had a coach tell me this. He said, Steve, will you define character for me? And, and really, I couldn't find a word for that. I was a young man, didn't fully even understand everything about it, but he said this to me. Character is a word that is hard to define. But when you see it, you will never forget it. How many of you know character is something that needs to be visible today? Character is something we need to all carry with us when we leave this room. But how many of you would agree that somehow the world has lost some of that character? Has lost some of that trust? Yet at the same time, even though we're in this world, how many of you know you are no longer of this world and your character basis is there because God loves you so much that you want to do the right thing rather than the wrong thing. That's right. Amen. And I, I say this in all love and all power, but character is defined by moral strength. How many of you know people have said, well, you've got to be a weakling to be a Christian. I want to tell you, you've got to be strong to be a Christian. Amen. Christianity isn't for the weak at heart, isn't for the weak at mind. How many of you know it's those that know what they want and are determined to do what they desire for God and know that the greater one really is worth serving than serving ourselves? How many of you know real character is laying down your way for God's way? Laying down your way for God's greater way, to put it, really. How many of you know life isn't all about you? In fact, it's an amazing thing because... <clears throat> Some people handle life kind of poorly, I would say. Have you ever heard the story about a monkey and the way they catch many monkeys when they try to catch them for the zoo? What they do is they take a jar and they will put an apple or a banana in a jar and tie that jar to a tree or a large branch and a monkey will reach in that jar and it's big enough just for their hand to go in and they'll grab that piece of fruit and they'll try to pull it out and it won't come out. And people can literally walk right up to them and they'll be screaming and going crazy but they will not let go of that piece of fruit. And they can walk right over and bind that monkey. How many of us have became monkeys? <laughs> We got something in our life that holds us back from what's God's best, but we're not willing to let go of it because it still looks good to our eye. And I don't say that in any condescending way, but I'm here to tell you today it's time to let go of some things. I'm here to tell you this morning that God is in this place to show up that we might know that the greater one lives in us and life isn't all about us. It's about laying down our way for God because how many of you know how many of you would agree God's got a higher and better way? I mean, you know, one of the reasons why openly I won't even deny that I came to the Lord at 27 was because how many of you know that I I tried it my own way. When I was in Vietnam, Sammy Davis Jr. came and did a UFO show, USO show, and he sang, I did it my way. That's the most selfish song. I love the music to it, but the words, how many of the no, lyrics really have power too? Because what it is, it's about someone that came to the end of their life and they're saying, I did it my way, even though it hurt, even though it did, I did it my way. How many of you know it isn't about your way, it's about God's way? Are you in this house this morning? Because see, that's what character is. Character is to say, I want to take the high road instead of the low road. I want to be above and not beneath. I want to be part of the head and not the tail. Can I get an amen in this house this morning? And I say that because how many of you know that character is, is strong moral strength, self-discipline, fortitude, the behavior and quality of a person. How many of you know character has great quality in it? And with that being said, I think the very first thing that we really have to look at is how many of you would really openly challenge yourself enough to say that sometimes in your life, sometimes even in my life, 
I have avoided things that maybe would build character in me. Because how many of you know character building is, it's a little uh, challenging to say the least. It's a little, uh, you have to have a little fortitude and strength and, and you have to see the bigger picture than just the moment that you live in. How many of you know that all of our world would be much better if people lived with some character? and treated everybody like they would want to be treated. The real message of God is not about how you're treated, it's about how I can treat somebody else, even though I don't like how I'm being treated. Come on church, are you here? Psalms 15.1, which I'll read to you and put on the screen up here, gives us a great definition of character. This is what it says, Lord who may abide in the tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hills, he who walks upright and is righteous and speaks the truth in his heart. The first thing he says is, how many of you know that, that it would be a lot better for all of us if we would see God's way and not our own? Right. In fact, how many of you want added things to your life? Well, the word says this in Matthew. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. How many of you know, people want things to come into their life. I heard one man say this, that many people want things in their life, but they're not willing to sacrifice anything to get it. Would you agree with that today? How many of you know, everybody wants a friend, but the Bible says, if you want a friend, show yourself friendly. How many people are waiting for someone to call them that maybe you, the, do you know, let me tell you a trick. The phone line goes both ways. <laughs> How many of you know, well, nobody's called me this week. Well, who did you call and encourage? Well, nobody's done this for me lately. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, anybody would agree that marriage is like, what have you done for me lately? Don't shout me down. But how many of you know lots of relationships are built on what have you done for me lately? When God really is saying that real character is to seek God's way. How many of you know that God loves us no matter what happens. He never gives up on us. Wouldn't it be great if we could take on that same character with the people we live with and our friends? Yes. Wouldn't it be good? Thank you for those amens. Hallelujah. But see, character, fortitude, really allowing the Spirit of God... He doesn't stop there. He says, who walks in righteousness and walks in uprightness. Who knows the truth. But look at the litany. Now, everybody listen to me very carefully. Everybody say, I love pastor. Yes. Now, remember, this is the Bible, not my opinion. But this is what the first thing he says. He says, he who does not backbite with his tongue. How many of you would agree that your tongue is what's destroyed most relationships in your life? Or, on the opposite side of that, built the relationships. When was the last time you told the person you're with, I love you as much today as I've always loved you? How hard is it to say, man, you're looking good, honey, without having a motive? I know I'm talking to the men right now, but... I noticed it was all high-pitched voices laughing. <laughs> but seriously, let's look at the word backbite. What does that mean? The word backbite is a unique word. It's, it's actually, we get it from two words, back and bite or chew. It's where we get the word first. It's not something that's done in front of someone. It means it's done behind their back. The second word is to chew on or to chew over. How many of you know that to bite means to bite down or uh, apply strong force? It means when we talk about somebody, do we lift them up or do we chew them up? He said, if a person's going to have character, who's going to be standing in the holy hills? Who wants to... Now listen, don't be upset. I'm not condescending anyone, but I think backbiting can be a real problem. Amen. 
How many of you know that if you can't say it to their face, you shouldn't say it behind their back? I mean, let's just bring it to where the rubber meets the road. And how many of us are happy when someone talks behind our back? In fact, you know, a lot of times when people are talking to me about somebody else and they're very upset about it and I will only listen so long, I wonder what they're saying about me when I'm not in their presence. Hello? I mean, we want character, but we don't want any sacrifice. We don't want to control our words. We want all the righteousness and goodness and blessing, and God cares about our life. But how many of us, there are certain things we do that keep the blessings of God from really coming into our life. And it isn't that He intentionally wants to hold them back, but how many of you would agree that God is sovereign, God is powerful, God is anointing, but everything you do in life, including salvation, is you made a choice and you had to take a step to get there. And a lot of times we blame the devil on things. In fact, I think sometimes, really, when it comes to things in life, and I think a lot of these things happen, backbiting, for one, with our tongue, or does evil to his neighbor, which is the next thing it says, nor he does not take reproach, will not take a reproach against his neighbor. How many of you know these are just things we should all have and do? They're not so far out there that I don't think God's asking us to do anything that we wouldn't want done to us. And isn't really that the golden rule? To treat others like you would like to be treated? Amen. If we think, how many of you agree that many times you've got to think before you speak? Right. Well, i got one amen anyway, hallelujah. But how many of you would agree that also there's some qualities here that we need to understand about bringing a reproach. He's talking about things that really want to help us, that would build our life and bring peace. But because people are hurt and because people are wounded, because look at the very next thing he says. The next thing he says, and it says, will not, does not, or but, but will honor those who love the Lord, who swears to him his own hurt will not change him. How many of you know life does hurt? I want to tell you openly, there was a time in my life, even in ministry, where I said, God, you know, it'd be really great to pastor if it wasn't for the people. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm praying for pastor right now. <laughs> because how many of you know that you can't make everybody happy all the time? I mean, Jesus couldn't, so I'm in good company. Right, amen. But I say this in all love. It hurts to, to sense things or have people do things or say things right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, how many of you know that it brings pain or brings thought? But I read something one time about people coming and going from churches, and, and it really helped me because I, I look at it completely different now. How many of you know that if you're supposed to be here, you can't leave? That's right. Yeah. And if you're not supposed to be here, you can't stay. And the reason of that is because when you look at it in that sense, I literally believe the guy that wrote the article, this is what he said. He said it's like an airplane pilot. He said, does an airplane pilot get upset because somebody has to change flights in Dallas that left from, you know, Sacramento to get to Florida? He said, that's all you are. You are an airplane pilot for God. You're taking people where they need to go. But sometimes you can't take everybody where they need to go, so you cannot be upset if they decide to get on another plane. That liberated me completely from really owning, because, you know, we take ownership. We don't want to, but we do. Are you out there this morning? Because, see, with character, you've got to understand and challenge yourself, because challenges or hurts cannot hold you back. The hurts in life are real, but you cannot let them begin to develop a certain character in you. You have to give the freedom and the power and the love and the anointing and the blessings of God due to Him. Because we're here to please Him, not everybody else. How many of you know if we please God, we'll please man according to Scripture? And hopefully, I'm pleasing more people than I'm disappointing. But I do know one thing. It's not up to me to be pleasing to you first. It's up to me to be pleasing to God first. Amen. And when I please God, that doesn't always mean there aren't going to be hurts. 
And a lot of people do these things, backbiting and have problems with their neighbors and do the other situation because they're hurt. I remember years ago, in fact, I preached years ago to leaders in our church and now I've taught it to a number of pastors. Hurting people hurt people. How many of you know that if you get wounded, you can't even hear right, you can't even think right, you, you skew everything that happens in your life. And Jesus said these words, I have came to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. A brokenhearted person has a hard time ever really functioning in normal society. Because everything is an insult, everything is a letdown, everything is a hurt. I'm preaching better than y'all are amen in it. And I'm not saying these things, like I said, condescendingly. We've all had hurts. But he said the person that's going to not backbite, not allow those things to happen, if those things are going on in your life, you cannot let your wounds treat others bad. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That good. Oh, A lot of people say, well, I just can't help it. My mama didn't change my diaper in time. <laughs> Get a life. Come on, Come on. <laughs> Well, my siblings used to beat up on me. Listen, I, I lived in a day before seat belts. And there were six of us in our family. And so that meant us four kids were in the back seat and my mom and dad were in the front seat. And I remember we'd be going down the road, and I don't know if you guys ever did this, but you know, all of us kind of had our spot in the car. And we would draw lines. If you cross that line... <laughs> Some of you haven't rode in a car enough to really know the difference, I guess. But, or maybe you were a single child and you got the backseat all to yourself. Well, hallelujah. Life isn't all yourself. And I, well, I had sisters, you know. I mean, my, I had three sisters and no brothers. And they used to beat me up. And my mom said, one of these days he's going to get big enough. And you girls are not going to like it because he's not going to take it. Then I got big enough and my mom said, don't hit your sisters. I don't get it. That's not fair. So see, we can blame it on all kinds of things in life. But you can't let your hurts hold you back, church. You can't let your letdowns and disappointments in life not still develop character in you. Because if you do, you go through life with some skewed idea of what life is all about when God is saying, I've came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Yeah. See, that abundant life means nothing missing, nothing broken. God doesn't care about your past. What he wants to know is where are you going forward from here? Maybe you've been abused as a child. I do not diminish the fact of the hurts and the disappointments. After being out at youth camp this week with Donnie on Wednesday night, I think what holds many people back is you can hear the voice of the enemy better than you can hear the voice of the Lord. If the enemy can tell you you're no good, the enemy can tell you your past will never change. If the enemy can tell you you're not worth it, if the enemy can tell you you're not good enough, can't God tell you you are good enough? So which voice are you listening to? It's funny how clearly sometimes people hear the negative but miss the positive. Come on, church, are you here? Look at your neighbor and say, God speaks good things to me. God loves me even when I'm not lovable. I am above and not beneath. I am part of the head and not the tail. God came into my life to give me abundance. Now, if you believe that, give the Lord a praise clap in this house because you need to understand the anointing of God in that. See, the real power and the real anointing and the real goodness of God isn't always seeing things in the way we have grown up or the way things have happened or those experiences that have came in our life. How many of you know God has a greater way and it's called character? Amen. And it's called bringing character into our life. He goes on to say, who does not put 
his money in wrong places, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things never will be moved. How many of you know that tells me these things are trying to move me from my destiny and my purpose in God to living mediocre and second class citizen in the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, I refuse to do that. I believe that God saved me to change my life, to bring me a better life, to bring me into a place that I've never been, that I can live in peace and hope and joy. And no matter what happens with me, I have long-suffering goodness and the anointing of God. So what is he really saying in this scripture? Number one, he's telling us that commitment counts. How many of you know that commitment is a lost art today? People are not committed in marriage. They're not committed in relationship. They're not committed on their job. How many of you know that we need to understand commitment is a huge part of our life? Yeah. I firmly believe that God honors commitment over talent or charisma. Yeah. I've seen a lot of better people that can preach the word of God and not butcher the English language like many times that I do. But the one thing that I am is I am committed to what God has called me to do. And God honors that. I mean, look around. When you started with five people and God has given us almost millions of dollars worth of property and hundreds of people, I mean, I was hoping I just have 20 people who would come and listen to me. And they could bring their dogs and cats if they wanted. And God has honored, and I firmly believe it's not because of my talent, it's not because of my ability or my oracle ability to speak, it's because I am committed to what God has for me and I will not be moved. When you make commitment a part of your life, I want to tell you the enemy doesn't know what to do. That's right, come on. When you say I am committed and I will not give up, I am going forward and I will not let anything stop me. How many of you know then and only then can you really know commitment? I believe why God honors that so much and nobody's ever taught this and that I know of, I haven't even taught it, but as I was preparing this, you know, a lot of times when I have a point like commitment, I sit and reflect on it and try to think. I firmly believe one of the reasons why God honors commitment so much is because that's what he lost with man at first. If you think back to Genesis 2 when God created and then Genesis 3 when the fall happened, what, what really happened? He gave Adam and Eve dominion over everything but one thing. Over that one tree they couldn't eat from. But they weren't committed to what he gave them. They always wanted that one thing they couldn't have. And we've been suffering ever since because they were not committed to what God told them to do. And I believe that's why God honors commitment so much. Because that was the first thing he lost with humanity. Was commitment. Commitment is a huge thing. And the first thing that he says about this is those that won't backbite, they'll be committed to friendship and, and different ones. They'll treat their neighbors the way they want to be treated. How many of you know that's real commitment today? So we have to understand, number two is relationship. What about relationship? How many of you know not everybody's good for you? Oh. You know, we tell, how many of you have raised children in here or are raising children? How many of you have ever told them, who you hang around is who you're going to become? Amen. Anybody ever been told that? Or maybe you were told that as a kid. All of a sudden, we get to be an adult and think that doesn't matter. Well, how many of you know it does matter? I think our acquaintances or who, what we allow into our life or who we allow to speak into our life makes a huge difference. I remember I had a pastor friend, a good friend. I loved him. He was, he was a nice man, could preach the Word of God much better than I could. Really had an oracle ability to speak to people. But I would go hunting with him every once in a while. And Pastor Sandy's the first one that noticed it. When I would come home, she would say, man, you would come home so negative. Because the entire time around the campfire hunting, all he would do is put people down, talk about ministry, how he didn't like this, and that was bad, and this was bad, and he wasn't getting his dues. And how many of you know the next thing you know, all of a sudden it's rubbing off on me? That's right. Come on. Come on. And I'd come home and think, well, why is it not better for me? Well, why? And I literally had to stop that relationship. 
Amen. Because that relationship, anybody that is not taking you for your destiny is taking you away from your destiny. Amen. Not all, and what he's talking about here is relationships. He's talking about who, who will not allow relationships to come into their life. You can be friends with people, but you don't have to let them speak into your life. You don't have to hang around them. You can say hello. You can talk to them. But how many of you know that if they're not doing you any good, you need to cut that out of your life? Thank you for that hearty amen. It's the craziest thing. Even in relationships of marriage, it's, it's a funny thing. It's hilarious to me how many people, they say, oh, I know this person's really bad, but I can change them. Turn to your neighbor and say, good luck, baby. Listen, if they were a jerk when they dated you, they're going to be a jerk when they marry you. And don't let that jerk in your life. Right. Say, I love the Lord. <laughs> but it's so true, man. It's amazing how many people, you know, we think, well, well, I just got to help them. I want to tell you, be very careful who you let speak into your life. If it's not taking you toward your destiny, then it's taking you away from your destiny. Number three, we need to get involved. How many of you know involvement is something most people are afraid of today? Well, I don't want to get too close. I've been hurt. I've been let down. I've been disappointed. So what? Without involvement, you have no real power. How many of you know if you want to change something? It's like people say, and maybe this is political a little, but people say, well, bless God, I don't like the government, so I don't vote. Well, if you don't vote, you don't got to say you change things by getting involved most people they change things by running away from it they don't stay long enough to help something work out you cannot get negative but you have to understand that involvement is what the enemy is trying to keep you from you have to get involved if you don't get involved nothing changes how many of you know if you want some in your life, you've got to be strong, powerful. And then how many of you would agree that challenges come? All challenges come to people. I can't tell you that none of this is going to not hurt. But I want to tell you, oh, it hurts so good when you get out the other side. How many of you know that you've got to understand the real power, the real anointing of love is to be able to help overcome in life, not just sit there knowing that there's not going to be any hurts. You have to be prepared. There are going to be things good things or good people bad things happen to Amen. but how many of you know the greatest thing is you don't have to go through it alone just right. see I have Jesus. I have Jesus every step of the way, step of the way. My, journey my journey might have some valleys have but praise God, praise God I don't have to camp here I'm I'll keep walking walk. because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Come on and give the Lord a praise clap in this house if you really believe that. So I mean challenges do happen. It is tough to go through life. But listen, life is where we work it out. Life is our challenge. Life is our victory as well. When you know Jeremiah 22, 11 says... For I know the thoughts I have toward you, Amen. thoughts of a future, thoughts of a hope. How many of you know, just look at your neighbor and say, I got a great future ahead of me. Tell them that. So we got to understand. And let me, let, me, let me say this in closing really quickly. How many of you know, charisma does not take the place of character? Gosh, I've known a lot of people who have a lot of charisma. I mean, and, and what's so funny is, man, well, not all, but I'm going to say this. How many of you would agree that we live kind of in a drug culture today? Amen. Every person has been affected by addictions or drugs of one form or another. And you know, people that become strongly addicted to things, most of them are real smoozers. That's how they get through life. They've, they've played the play of living somebody else instead of who they really are. And how many of you know that when they come and they get saved and even set free from their addiction, it's a work to not live on charisma. 
How many of you know that openly, even my own life, I mean, I won't deny as a young man, I mean, I had a lot of charisma. It seemed like everything I did just got blessed and everything I touched was good. But inside, I was just as empty as a, a empty beer bottle that all had been taken from them. And so, even when I got saved, I decided, you know, I'm friendly, everybody likes Steve, but I won't let anybody in. Because I'm afraid. I moved 13 times by the time I was in the 8th grade. I learned a long time ago it was hard to move in the middle of a class or in the middle of a year because, you know, you made friends at first and then you had to move from those friends and now you're the new kid in the school. So I created a pattern in my life to where I knew how to get along in society and everybody thought I was friendly and nice. And I was. It's not that I had... But I still would not let people in my life. I, I was learning to operate on charisma, not character. Because see, I never lived anywhere long enough to wear character. Character is a long-term teller. But charisma, you know, you can go anywhere and fit in. And how many of you know that's what a lot of people live on today is charisma. But it can't take the place because look at what it says. In James it says, But above all, my brethren, do not swear either to heaven or earth or with any oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. Oh, good preaching, Pastor. Amen. Do you know how much of our world lives on charisma today? Literally. You don't really know. It takes time to get to know a person. People that even want to get into a relationship immediately and then they want to consummate it and then they want to move on and they want to act like nothing's happening. How many of you know that's a mistake? You don't really know a person. I mean, Sandy and I were together for almost six years before we had any children. Because, I mean, let's face it, man. She was taking care of me. I didn't want any more kids. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, when we, we met when she was 14 and I was 16. I mean, we were babes and I was really immature. Yes. You're supposed to say, I can't believe that there. <laughs> but thank God that Sandy understood commitment and it showed me things that I needed. That's why I say, put people in your life that's going to teach you something. Put people in your life that's going to make you a better person, not just make you who you are and always agree with you. Right. Donnie said something to me going down to lunch last Sunday. I was, I was blown away because I'd never seen myself in that light, but I realized I was like that. I was always, I always got my acceptance in athletics in school. I mean, believe me, man, I was not the smartest kid in the school. But I was pretty good at athletics, so I excelled at athletics and got my acceptance out of athletics. And so what happened was, when I got into my adult life, because I, and in athletics, I like to win. So therefore, every argument, every debate, every situation, I wanted to win. Don't look at me like that, like deer in the headlights out there. I thought I had to win every battle because if I didn't win it, I didn't feel like I succeeded. How many of you know that can cause a lot of hurt in your life? And you know, it's good to be, I mean, I was so, when I was in high school, my poor parents, did I get the chewing out of my life from my mother? We only lost a few games in football in high school in the four years I played, but one of the games, Sandy rode with my parents. And I was supposed to ride home with her and my parents, but we lost the game. I was so mad I wouldn't ride home with my parents or her, I wanted to pout on the bus. <laughs> say, just look at your neighbor and say, he needs a lot of prayer. <laughs> but I mean, this is where we live, church. This is how life really is. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Quit living on charisma. And then lastly, how many of you know we really see the fruit of the Spirit 
in Galatians 5 when it talks about these things. In fact, let me just give them to you in closing. And I'm going to ask Robert to come if he will. We're going to start next week. A, we're going to talk about destiny. How many of you know there are people in here? I've known you. I've seen you. You have real destiny in your life. But how many of you know it's time to step out of the boat a little? You can never walk on the water without first stepping out of the boat. And one of the, one of the worst things that holds me, most people back is fear of failure. You know, wow, boy I sense a spirit in this house right now. Listen to me. Some of you are afraid. Your life operates out of fear. And it's because you failed. But you know, it's like love. Sometimes love can be the greatest experience you ever have. But sometimes love hurts. But there's an old saying I've never forgot in my life. It's better to have loved and been hurt than to never love at all. See, with destiny, you take a chance. With the future, nothing certain but heaven. And when you're going to be a water walker, the enemy's going to make sure you get your eyes on everything you couldn't do. But destiny will bring you to a place to where life is no longer about you. And character will be the thing that will carry you over every time. But if you don't recognize that, if you don't allow the Spirit to be released in your life, You'll live hampered, hamstringed, like that monkey hanging on to something. Though the enemy's walking up to you to put you in a cage, you won't let go of that. God is here today to say life is changing for you if you'll change for Him.